Hey, it's Trish at the Sewing Back in Robinson again, and I am learning new things. I've been playing with Art and Stitch, which is the program that we use for um, Pro Stitcher, and I have created a design, and I would like to share it with you today. So here goes. Let me turn this around and see if I can turn my screen around. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it or not, but we have here on the screen the saying that says, Stand tall, wear a crown, and be sweet on the inside. That actually, uh, if I can get it to behave itself so you can see, that actually is a saying about the pineapple. And you can kind of see the pineapple there in the middle. And so what I've done is I've set an area in this part of the fabric right here by using my two corner area up here. I just hit one corner, then move this, the machine and hit two corner again. Um, and then I will actually take the design, go to modify, and hit skew. And then over here, I'm going to hit skew 2, which moves the design inside the area that I just set. So I'm going to move the machine over here. You can see the crosshairs on the screen kind of moving. There's my crosshairs. When I get over to the beginning, I'm going to line it up with that green mark as close as I can get it. Then I'm going to go to Pro Stitcher, and I am going to hit Run. The machine is going to tell me to make sure that my needle is up. Actually, Pro Stitcher is telling me that. And so I'm going to hold on to my thread tail down here, and then I'm going to hit proceed on the screen, which I'm going to do that with this finger, so you're going to get kind of close. Once I hit proceed, it took a stitch for me, and I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread, which is hard to do one-handed, so give me just a second. Once I get that up, I'm going to hold on to it, and then we're going to go back up here to resume and hit that, and the machine's going to start stitching. It was really neat to me to create my own design because you kind of have to think outside the box. You have to think in, um, sorry, there's some loose thread tails there. You have to think in continuous line instead of left to right. So what you see on the screen here, right now it's making the word stand in the right direction just like we would write it from left to right. So we would go from the S up to the T and then the A, then the N, then the D. When I'm done with the D, you see it swoop back and it goes over the T to cross it. But what really became interesting was when it got over here, and we were going to go back the other direction, I had to make the design and then switch the start and stop point so it could actually go right to left. So um, you kind of have to think outside the box, but once you get that all figured out, you end up with this, which I don't know if you can see it or not, where it says stand tall. And then there's the B, there's a the heart, sweet, there's the pineapple. But it just stitches it out for you, which is amazing to me that you can create your own motifs and patterns to match the quilt you're working on. If you've got a specific baby quilt that has maybe, um, oh, I don't know, a nautical theme, you could do anchors and and boats and all kinds of fun stuff and with Art and Stitch it just makes it really fun to be able to create your own patterns. You can see up here on the screen now you can see where the yellow is and where the crosshairs are moving there. They are actually following the pattern that I created just like a roller coaster. On an embroidery design it matters how many stitches you have in a specific area. On Pro Stitcher it doesn't matter because what happens is that design becomes a roller coaster track. The machine has two encoders on it, and they're back here. You can see that wheel right there moving, that little rubber wheel. What that's doing is telling the machine exactly how far the machine has moved. And by doing that, it can calculate how many stitches it needs to lay down. So there's one that goes front to back, and there's also one that goes left to right, which is pretty neat. If either one of those is not working as they should, you'll get skip stitches, or it might have good stitches one direction and skip stitches the other direction. But those encoders are what actually tells it how many stitches to lay down. So the way the pattern is designed doesn't matter quite as much as far as like stitch length and things. Now see here it's starting to go backwards and this is where it was kind of tough on me because I had to decide okay um, I have to design this left to right because that's the way my brain works but then I actually moved the start and stop point so it could stitch it right to left and then hook the two pieces together. This is stitching out on the Baby Lock Regalia with the Pro Stitcher. You can see this machine has a 20 inch throat space with lots and lots and lots of light under there. 
don't know if you can see all that lighting, but it's kind of a LED light strip from front to back. With a 20 inch throw space, you kind of gain what you don't have on your 18 inches mach machines where you lose those two inches for the rails. The other thing about this machine is on the kinetic frame, the quilt actually rolls up on top instead of on the bed of the machine. So therefore, you don't have as much throat space lost. It stays the same all the way across your quilt, okay? Um, a neat thing, too, about this frame, you have a rail here that's called an idler rail. That idler rail is exactly that. It sits idle. Its only job is to hold the quilt down against the machine so you've got a nice, flat, smooth surface. If you notice, that quilt is hardly bouncing when that foot hops up and down on it. That's because the way the frame is designed, it puts your fabric in the right position every time. One of my ladies was asking me the other day about loading the frame. Your quilt back goes from this top rail all the way across to your cloth leader. Then your batting comes up from the batting rail, wraps around your quilt back here, and goes across to the top, and then we baste it. Your quilt top actually goes from the bottom rail and comes up over this front rail and lays flat all the way to the back. And again, we baste that nice and straight. With Pro Stitcher, you have a really cool channel lock feature, which is right, uh, hold on, right in there somewhere. Oh, down at the bottom. It says horizontal and vertical. They're kind of grayed out right now. You can make this machine do a horizontal line or a vertical line. Just by touching those buttons, it locks the motors and keeps it in gear. You notice we're almost done with our design. We're to the word inside. I know it's really hard to see on the screen with this phone. But it's doing the word inside and finishing up the tail. And then it will stop at the red stop point. It'll tie in place. And then I can actually push this button at the bottom here if I want and do a tie off on the machine myself personally. I'm gonna unlock my motors. So I needle up down to tie in place and then I can pull over to the side, drop a stitch, and bring it back. And that will actually bring up my bobbin thread tail so that I can trim it and there won't be long tails hanging underneath the fabric. Um, if you've ever been quilting and all of a sudden you feel your machine get hung up under the fabric, usually that's because there's a bobbin tail that didn't get cut and it catches the bed of the machine. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. If you'd like to see more, come on into the Sew and Back and speak with myself or Delaney or Whitney or Carl or Sean and we would all be very glad to help you to learn more about quilting and further your sewing ventures. Thanks.